Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today what I want to talk about since it is like the current meta and most popular thing going on in the game right now is kind of everything to do with boss mules and kind of like a guide built around how to create a boss mule, what to do efficiently and effectively, what level, what gear, uh, and some detailed things to look at before making a boss mule. So to get into it, kind of the first thing that you want to think about when making a boss mule obviously is what character you're going to make for your boss mule. So there's a few things to look at when creating the character. Uh, first thing, obviously, is you want to make sure that it's not a super weak class. You want to make sure that it is on the stronger side, so you don't have to fund as much money into it. Uh, obviously, you don't want to create a class that's super, super weak, because then you'll end up having to put in, you know, three, four, five times as much money just for it to be uh, effective. Uh, but looking at just the strongest class isn't the only thing you want to do as well. You want to make sure that you're making a class that not only one you enjoy playing, but also a class that isn't extremely complicated to learn as well. Because at the end of the day, like we're making the boss mules just to make more money for our main. So you don't want to spend a ton of time having to learn the, cl the class and learning certain mechanics. Make sure that it's a simple class, a strong class, and also a class that you somewhat enjoy playing. Now also one thing to remember and kind of keep in the back of your head is if that bossy mule character fits in line with your legion board and what I mean by that is if my main is an Adele and my legion characters are mainly built for a strength class I know that making a strength character is going to overall already be a little bit stronger than something like a mage that I don't have any uh, int legion blocks made for so that's kind of like one little thing to look at but it's not super super important once you figure out the class that you want to make and you kind of have that already determined in your head you want to then look at how easy it is to fund the nodes for the class and kind of what i mean by that is some classes only need one trio pair to be efficient some need two and then others need three and i'll give a little example uh, of two right now so for example like ho young it's a good bossy meal class but it needs two to be efficient and it needs three to be optimized so three pairs so that's six node slots so something like ho young wouldn't be super super good for a beginning player to start with something more so like a demon slayer or a bowmaster that only really needs one pair of nodes to be effective and efficient would be something much better at the end of the day you don't want to be pumping two to 2.5 k nodes into one character you want to try to sit between you know, 900 to 1500 to fully max out the nodes. So make sure that you're looking at how many nodes the character actually needs to be efficient. Don't just blindly make a character. And then when, once you get it up to like 210 and 215, you realize, oh wait, I need X amount of nodes and I don't have that. So make sure you kind of know how many nodes you have and how many nodes you're willing to put into it before starting a bossy mule. After that, you kind of want to determine what level you want to bring that character to and what that's going to be dictated by is is pretty much what bossy mule you want to create. I typically recommend for people to make like Lomian bossy mules. That seems to be the most cost efficient uh, and easiest. So if you were to be trying to make a Lomian bossy mule, try to get it anywhere from 215 to 220. Obviously 220 being the most optimal, just because number one, the final damage increase and number two, you gain that extra node slot, which is gonna help a ton when doing weekly bosses. If you're trying to do something like an easy lucid slash normal slime boss meal, which I don't necessarily recommend, but if that's something that you do wanna do, I would say try to aim for 230 to 235 at the minimum. Uh, and then once you kind of get all that information figured out, what class, how many nodes, the level, then you kind of wanna look at how do I fund this character with what gear and how do I do it most efficiently? So this is gonna be pretty linear for most people. There's obviously gonna be a few things that'll change depending on what time of year it is, if there's certain events going on, um, if you have friends that can do carries, but for the most part, it'll be typically linear. So for your hat top and bottom, you want to go with the three set CRA. And then for your accessories, you want to go with Golux. Now, 
I know a lot of people say try to go for superior Golux gear. I don't necessarily think that that's a necessity for bossy mules. I think you can get away just fine with doing reinforced Golux set. I think you only lose out on about 10% boss damage and 20 or 30 attack. So if you're thinking about gearing up a boss mule, I would stay away from superior versus reinforced just because of how much more time the superior is going to take versus reinforced. And there's not a significant damage increase when you compare the two. So now you have the top, bottom, and hat and accessories figured out. You want to go with the APSO 5 set. Uh, so you want to get your cape, shoes, glove, shoulder, and weapon from Lotus slash Damien. Now, obviously this is gonna be dependent on if you have somebody to trade with or if your guild or friends are willing to carry you. Uh, but if you're able to get carried, definitely take them as much as you can. With the system change now with drops, it's a lot easier to actually get drops from the two uh, versus before and now you can pick what you need or what you want so it's not as much rng based which is definitely a nice thing um if you do bring the boss meal up to 220 then you're able to get carried lucid so you can start bringing it on lucid carries to hopefully get a weapon which will be a, a significant damage boost so if you can get uh, lucid carries and you're willing to get the bossy mule to 220 definitely go that route it's not the end of the world if you can't you can still very efficiently do all the weekly bosses with an abso weapon but if you have the option to get lucid carries i definitely start taking it on as many carries as you can so now that we have most of the gear mapped out what's left is things like your rings your heart so obviously depending on the time of year uh, you might not have the option to get event rings on the bossy mule. I know a lot of the events nowadays come with a ton of free rings. So I think for the most part moving forward, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But if you're not able to get the event rings, you can definitely get uh, the treasure John ring from the NLC quest line, the ring from a horn tail, and then a reinforced and solid Golux ring for your last two. And then obviously the heart is gonna be event dependent as well. Um, the heart isn't a necessity at all it's definitely very mid maxi so i wouldn't recommend buying like a fairy heart from an event shop you could definitely just get by with using like a regular level 30 or 40 heart and just going for like three to six percent stat on it it's not a huge damage increase so you don't have to worry too much about that uh so kind of once you've gotten everything established in terms of the gear the level the class and the nodes you need to obviously upgrade this gear for it to you know, do the weekly bosses efficiently. In my past experience, I would only recommend cubing to unique and trying to go for one to two line stat. Uh, 1.5 line stat is definitely fine. I would not min-max going for legendary, even if it is um, a DMT event, just because of how much more expensive it will be versus the actual efficiency of doing that. So, so I definitely only recommend tiering up to unique and going for two line stat. And you can do this by just pretty much recycling your Meister cubes and master cubes that you get from weekly bossing and putting them on your bossing mule. So then once you have everything cubed to one to two lines stat at unique, you can start to star force. I would only recommend going to 12 stars off event and only going for 15 plus only only on events. You can get by getting to 15 stars on like a 30% off or 5, 10, 15. But if you are going to go over 15 stars, I highly, highly recommend waiting for a 5, 10, 15 or a Shining Star Force event just because of how much more cost efficient it is. So once you've upgraded all your gear to two line stat at unique and 12 to 17 stars, you should be pretty efficient at running up to Lomian within 30 to 40 minutes at max. Obviously, if you're going for the easy lucid slash slime, you're gonna want everything at 17 stars for the most part to efficiently do that. But like I said before, I do not recommend getting uh, lucid slash slime mule just because of the cost efficiency. Um, But yeah, I think that kind of wraps up like the overall guide on how to go about making bossy mules. They're made to make your main money. So don't feel the need to put in 10 to 30 bill. Like you can get by with doing very minimum upgrades if you do it uh, effectively on events and not trying to greed too much for min maxi stats like going to legendary and going for 15 to 17 off event but if there is anything else that you guys think that i should have added definitely leave it in the comment section below but 
for now, that is going to wrap up the video. If you guys have any questions or if there's anything you guys would like to see in the future, let me know. But for now, take it easy, guys. Peace.